Hello everybody, I'm uh, Anka from the XWiki project and in the next 15 minutes we're going to see how we implemented uh, annotations on documents the extensible wiki way and you'll soon understand what that means. So a bit about XWiki. XWiki is an enterprise uh, application wiki written in Java. It's been there for six years. I've been a committer for almost three years now. Um, that's from 2010. 23 committers, 12 commits per day, four issues fixed per day, which is quite good. Now, what's Enterprise ap Application Wiki? What's a Application Wiki most important? Well, first it means that it's a wiki, it has the documents, it has enterprise level collaboration features around these documents, and besides that, it has extensibility features to allow users to create situational applications, meaning that users would normal users would go in the web interface of the wiki, they will define data types, and, and uh, they will fill in data for those data types, store it in the wiki, and then write a little bit of scripting to use that data to create little applications. And uh, we have actually, I have actually done that, you're going to see how it works in the demo. Now, about these annotations, the first time I used the annotations seriously was when I was preparing my Bachelor of Science thesis, and um, I was um, creating these PDFs, sending them to my supervisor. My supervisor was filling them with uh, yellow stuff. Hopefully, after a couple of months, I managed to get a non-yellow paper to actually do the thesis. <laughs> and uh, so he was uh, giving me various suggestions. Don't uh, rephrase that. Don't write it like this, and so on, and so on. So we were exchanging these documents uh, between me and him. Now imagine that I have a colleague I want to write the paper with and some other uh, professor I want to, uh, to annotate to review my paper. And uh, you can see that it's already a bit too much communication and if we add some more people and some more people, it becomes a whole big pile of mess. We don't know where the paper is, which one is the latest version, which review is for which version, and so on. Of course, obviously, the solution is to do this in a wiki. Could have, uh, I could have put some smiley faces on those people, actually. So we, you have authors that collaborate in the wiki to create the paper. You have the reviewers that also do the annotations on top of that paper in that wiki. And everything is, everything is integrated in the same system, so you can see always the latest version, latest modifications, latest reviews, and so on. Let's see how that actually happens in XWiki. So this is a demo time where I have to find the correct window. Now, I've created this uh, very um, interesting document about, about FOSDEM, which I uh, shamelessly copied from the internet. And we can see that some people have added some annotations, like this one here. You can see the little icon, you can read the text, but you can also see the annotations on top of it. For example, this one is a, is a rephrasing suggestion. Instead of to meet to, this is a suggestion to do to meet in order to. This is a little um, explanation, like, on top explanation, like a little comment if you want, a contextual comment, and this is also a suggestion to remove this part, whatever. I can also add a new annotation. For example, on open source, I'm going to say that so I select, I hit the keyboard shortcut, and I get this window and I type my annotation. Say in as defined by OC. And I'm going to put a link to OC. the open source initiative for if anyone, but I guess no one. So now I have this annotation here, which is being printed in the, in the tooltip. But as I said, XWiki is, um, XWiki is an extensible wiki. You can actually define data and then do stuff with that data. So this table here, I generated from structured data which I store in the wiki. It's a table of um, very fictive speakers. So let's look a bit, a bit uh, at the source of this, of this part of the table. Here it is. I hope you see it. Do you see it? Should I make it bigger? This is actually the source of that table. As you can see, none of the content which is displayed in the page is actually stored anywhere in the content of the page. It's stored in some objects attached to this page, and there's a little bit of a velocity script there that iterates through all the all objects and displays them. Now. It's very interesting that we can actually annotate this, even if the content is not there. So I will select this, and I will add my annotation. Rephrase to strong word. 
add annotation. And I can see the annotation here. The same for this RSS macro, which displays the latest, uh, the latest articles from the FOSDEM RSS feed. I can add this annotation here and everything works fine, even if it's not in the source of the document. Now, how does this work? How can I annotate stuff which are not actually in the document? It's all because of the rendering engine of XWiki and the way it works. So you have the page in wiki syntax, the content of the page, and this page is parsed in an abstract, abstract syntax tree, which has a node for every entity, if you want, every entity in the model of the page that you, that you find. A word is actually the text that will get displayed, and then various paragraph, link, and so on. The macros that we've seen, the little piece of a script is a macro, and the content that is generated by this macro is also generated in the tree. It's a bit gray here because it doesn't actually exist in the source. It will be generated in the tree. So then we take the annotations and we map them on this tree. How does this work? The annotations are stored as the actual text that the user has selected with a bit of uh, context around it to make sure that I can, uh, I can find the unique, uh, the unique place because it can appear multiple times and so on. And so the text is read, is mapped on this tree, and then this tree is rendered into whatever, in this case, HTML. This strategy comes in very handy when you think that XWiki is a, is a, is a polyglot wiki. You can have various syntaxes for the input, like wiki syntax, XWiki syntax, media wiki syntax, and so on, and various formats for the output, like HTML or some other things you might want to think of. So it's very interesting that you have annotations at the tree level because it will work with any input and any output. And that's really, really cool. Now, a wiki is mainly about editing, right? You might have already thought about that. What will happen if I edit the text on which I added the annotation? So let's see. I will, uh, I will perform the modification here and I will remove this part. Let's perform the modification to meet in order in order to, and the suggestion said, let's remove this part here. Do you want me to close my tweet deck? Somebody's harassing. So, my annotation has turned orange. You can see it here. And if I hover, I have, a, I have a text telling me what was the original text and what's the current text. I can also validate it and say, OK, it still makes sense where it is. Or I can delete it if I don't like it. Let's validate it. Yep. And here it has disappeared. But I haven't lost my annotation, because I can go to the annotations tab, and I find it here. I find the original text of the annotation and the fact that it was removed. The red icon uh, indicates the fact that it was removed from the page. I couldn't map it on the page. So, what else? Now, what will happen? I showed you the, the rendered content, the generated content, which is annotated. What will happen if I edit that? Assuming that I want to not display people in a, in a table anymore, now you can see how easy it is to actually program in XWiki. And I want to put them in a list. I want to put first the name of the speaker, followed by semicolon with the name of the talk, and in parentheses, I want to put the name of the project from which the speaker comes. I hope I'll get this property name right. OK. And there. The structure has changed, but my annotation has still, still stays there. As you assume, the same will happen if a new feed comes in and if the RSS macro changes or whatever. It, it, it works and it manages to, uh, to find the place of the annotation because of that, because it's actually the text which is being annotated. As long as it is in the page, it works. And also if it modifies. I'll, uh, I'll show later. Now, as I've explained, you can store uh, structured data and operate with it. But annotations are nothing else but this structured data. So what if I want, for example, in the case of this annotation, I wanted to put a, to put a URL. What if I want to actually, to actually store this URL in a field so that I know that it's a URL that, uh, that uh, provides more information about the annotation? Let's do that. I'm going to go to the class that defines the annotation structure. There. 
I'm going to say edit. And I'm going to want to edit the class. We can see here all the fields about the selection and everything. And I will add one called reference and of type string. I add it. I see it here. I can do a little bit of configuration. Like, uh, say, I want to change the pretty name. I want it to appear as URL. I do save and view. I do save and view. I go back to my document using this great, great feature. And if I want to edit this annotation, you see I already have the field here. And if I want to edit it, my field is already here. I can fill it in. And I can see it under the URL field, which is quite great. Now, this customization of the annotations type and annotations UI, we can see uh, uh, more of it done in the Socracy project, which is a project that aims to provide an online environment for political debate for regular users. Like not necessarily political people, but regular users. They have these articles which they comment, they discuss, and so on. And here we customize it quite a lot. You have a mood of your, of your annotation. You have various other fields. I can say, for example, that I annotate this. I say that uh, it's, uh, I, can, I can choose various types. I say it's an appreciation suggestion. I am furious because the idea is not new, not clear. And I completely disagree with it. I add my annotation. And I can see it colored uh, according to the mood and so on. I can also filter the annotations by various criteria to only see in the page the ones that I want, which is quite interesting. And easy, easy to do in XWiki because it's just a layer on top of the UI. You'll see. Then, it's not only the UI that you can customize in the, uh, in the annotations. For example, for the Scribble project, which is a, which is a project between various, uh, various participants that aims to provide automatic annotations, automatic semantic annotations on content and, and images and everything. How do we do that? In XWiki, you can actually take the content of a document, send it to an external annotator, which will generate some annotations in an RDF data store, and, um, and then display the annotations on the, on the wiki page. So I can say, analyze this document, and now the automatic annotation, annotate, annotators are running, and it automatically generated these annotations on the page. I can see that FOSDEM has been identified as an organization. All these people here, which now have some real names, have been identified as persons, and so on. How come all this is possible? It's possible because of the, modular, of the modular structure of XWiki. There's the annotation core that uses the rendering module to do the rendering of annotations. The maintainer, which I talked about, which identifies the moment when a, when a document updates and automatically readjusts the annotation to still make sense. And the annotation storage. The annotation storage, by default, is implemented using XWiki objects and so on. But for Scribo, we could very easily just change this module, do it to uh, make it so that it fetches data from an RDF store, Everything has remained unchanged, and still, uh, still it works on top of XWiki. Then we have this uh, REST module, uh, this uh, REST interface that provides the data to, uh, to the annotations UI, which is very flexible due to the J6 and the SSX extensions, which deserve a talk all by their own. And for Socracy, we just adjusted bit, a bit this part. Everything remained unchanged, and it still works properly on top of the XWiki. So thank you very much. You have the, the URLs here. If you download XWiki now and test it, you get a pen and a sticker. And if you write an extension for XWiki, uh, send us an email and we'll send you a t-shirt. Because, um, because you can do that um, since it's a very, very extensible platform. Thank you. The, Dreadful clock shows that I still have one minute, one minute and a half. So, are there any questions? Questions? Is there any extension or is it in the wiki or something like chatting online? Uh, sorry? Is there any extension or already done uh, made by someone about chatting online? Uh, we tried that. You mean uh, you mean chatting in the wiki? 
We tried that. It wasn't very. Um, I, uh, the question is if, there, if we have an extension for chatting in the wiki. We tried that. It's quite easy to do, actually, with an XMPP JavaScript library. It's very doable. And without changing anything on the server side, just writing a little, uh, little. Um, Ah, yeah, and we have an IRC bot that stores, reads from IRC and stores in the wiki. Yes? Uh, we showed this and if you removed the text where there was an indication that you couldn't see it. We said also that the text that surrounds it should also remain the same. So how much of the text around it should remain the same? No, it doesn't have to remain the same. It works. It just detects that everything was changed. It also detects when the annotation is changed and the text, and it adjusts automatically. Okay. Nothing has to remain the same.